So if you haven't already turned in your launcher lab, turn in that launcher lab before you leave today. That will be doomed. This guy, this guy right here, he's gonna be your he's gonna be one of your besties by the end of class. Even though he's dead. He's still gonna be one of your best friends today. Okay? That's Mr. DeMoff right there. And he he helped you out lots and lots of times. Uh, at the end of class yesterday we asked you to do number six, I believe it was, the bottom one down there. Um, so here are said answers to Number six, um, finding, looks like I'm all the way down here. So Z1, Z1, I got five uh, for my R and 306.87 for my uh, angle. For Z2, I got six square roots of two and 315 for my angle. So then if we multiply them together, then that gets us um, that. And then if we distribute it out, we get negative 6 minus 42 up. If we divide them, we get that. Now, I rationalized my denominator um, for that one, but you know, that we're kind of, the jury's out on that one if we would have you rationalize the denominator for that one. Because it's, it's not a unit circle angle, so it doesn't really matter. You know, so it's there. Okay. Questions on that one? No? All good and said hood? Great. All right. So let's talk today about, again, a complex number. We're still talking complex numbers today. But let's talk about taking a complex number to a so if I were to do this by hand, it would be a beast, right? Because you'd have to do 2 minus 2i squared of 3. And then you'd have to multiply that by 2 minus 2i squared of 3. And then you'd have to multiply that by 2 minus 2i squared of 3. And then you'd have to multiply that by 2 minus 2i square root of 3. And then you have to multiply that by 2 minus 2i square root of 3. And then you're saying to yourself, self, well, I can only multiply 2 at a time. So I have to take these two, and then I have to multiply them together. And then let's say you forgot that, well, that should be the same as taking these two, but you forgot that fact because you're so focused in on doing it. Well then, now you got to take that result and you got to multiply it by that one. And then you got to take that result and you got to multiply it by that one. And then you got to take that result and you got to multiply it by that one. And it's like, Ugh. right? Because you've just done a lot of multiplication and there's radicals and things are not nice. And then it's just dog and cat sitting together. Mass is here. But if we flip that over into trig form, we would have R cosine theta or cosine sine of theta. And then we'd multiply that by R cosine I sine. Yep. And we multiply that by R cosine I sine. Yep. And then we multiply that by r cosine i sine theta. And then we multiply that by r cosine i sine theta. And you're saying to yourself, self, it really didn't get any shorter. But it did. Because what do we do when we multiply them in trig form? We learned this yesterday. We multiply all of the r values, right? So then this would become. R, oops, I guess we're going to go kind of still black here because, you know, why not? Why is it acting all goofy today? Because, you know, why not? Okay. We go R times R times R times R times R there, right? And then we would do theta. 
theta plus theta plus theta plus theta plus theta. Right? So that's what we learned yesterday. Take all the r values, multiply them together. Take all the theta values, add them all together. Well, what does this red simplify to be? r to the fifth power, right? So this would just be r to the fifth power. What does the green simplify to be? What? Five theta, right? Because you got five theta, so it's five theta. Well, my guy Demov, who was doing all this stuff by hand, he was doing all this stuff up here, this blue line. He was doing all that by hand, and he's like, there's got to be a better way. Because he's a mathematician. And, and mathematicians are lazy. If there is a formula, we're going to use the formula. If there's a shortcut, we're going to take the shortcut. Because okay? we don't want to do all this math. Especially if we're doing it by hand. Okay? So he said, well, this happens. And then this happened. And you notice that pattern always happened. So he came up with DeMauve's theorem. And DeMauve's theorem says that if you are taking a complex number in trig form, it's got to be in trig form. Okay? Be in standard form or in, uh, what's one called? Form of material. Okay? If you're in trig form, then you take that power and you apply that power to your R value. Okay? So you've got R to the N out front. And then you take that power and you multiply it by your theta. That will always happen. So this would also be R to the N power. And that's going to happen all of the time. So that makes it easier than going negative 3 plus 3i, negative 3 plus 3i, negative 3 plus 3i, negative 3 plus 3i. Okay? So let's do that now. Let's apply that. Well, first off, what we've got to do is we've got to convert into trig form. So I've got to convert this angle here, or this uh, complex number, into trig form. Okay? So first off, I would need to find my R value. Now, if you don't see that this is a special 45, 45, 90 right triangle, you can go through and you can do this. Okay? And you get the square root of 18 which then would simplify to be 3 square root of 2. And then you would have to find your reference angles. And if you didn't see that it's a 45 degree angle, you would get to here and you would say, oh, well, that's the inverse tangent of 1. That's 45 degrees. And since this complex number lives in the complex plane up in quadrant number two, that would be 180 minus 45 degrees. Your actual theta is then going to be 135 degrees. So this problem now becomes three square roots of two times Cosine I sine of 135 degrees all to the fourth power. So we can now apply the mod. The mod says that we're going to take three square roots of two, and that's going to be taken to the fourth power. DeMauve says, 
that we're going to take 4 times 135 degrees. And we're going to adjust it from there. Okay. So 3 square roots of 2 to the 4th power is... 3 to the 4th power times the square root of 2 to the 4th power. 3 to the 4th power is... 81. The square root of 2 to the 4th power is... 2 times the square root of 2. Four. Square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2. I know, you, you went to the far left. So that square root of 2 times 2 is, is 2. 2 times 2 is 11. Okay. 4 times 135. By 40? So this, 81 times 4, Eighty-one times 4, you literally all have calculators in front of you if you don't know that it's 324, literally. Do I like that? Why not? 540 is not in my in my first lap, right? So how do I get it back into my first lap? Subtract 360, 540 minus 360, 180. So the answer here would be 324 CIS 180. And then from there, if we needed to put it in standard form, it would be negative 324 plus 0 pi. If we needed to put it in ordered pair form, it would be negative 324 times 0 pi. And we can go with that. Okay? Good, good times. You tried this one. Yeah. All right, so if you didn't see the fact that this was a 30, 60, 90 triangle, then you would have to do some um, extra maths, but your R still would be equal to 2. If you didn't see that this was a 30, 60, 90 triangle, and that your theta is going to be 60 degrees, then you'd have to do, you know, inverse tangent of root 3 over 1 and all that fun stuff, and still, because it's in quadrant 1, bam, boom, bing, done. Okay? So then this becomes 2 times the cosine i sine of 60 degrees, and we're going to take that to the fourth power. So that's going to be 2 to the fourth power, cosine i sine of 4 times 60 degrees. 2 to the 4th power is 16, 4 times 60 degrees is 240 degrees. Agree? Love it. Okay. So now, we're going to go off script a little bit. So in the, in the space that you have, uh, yet still above roots of complex numbers, because We'll do roots of complex numbers on Tuesday. I want you to do this wonderful additional problem. I wanted to get one in today that wasn't pretty. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because not everything's going to be all rainbows and unicorns. Okay. I get an R value of the square root of 17. 
Inverse tangent of four would be my reference angle, which would be seventy five point nine six degrees. Since this is in quadrant four, that is going to be three hundred and sixty minus that reference angle. So I get a two hundred and eighty four. Point zero four degree actual angle. Yes? Yes. Okay. So this then becomes the square root of 17 CIS of 284.04 degrees, all taken to the fifth power. So the law says then that that is the square root of 17 taken to the fifth power times CIS of 5 times 284.04 degrees. 17 um, squared is 289. So this is 289 square roots of 17 times five times 284.04 would be 1420.2 degrees. Way too big, need it to be 360. So I'm going to subtract off 360, still too big. Subtract off 360, still too big. Subtract off 360. Gets me a final answer of 289 square roots of 17 times cosine i sine of. 340.2. Wanted to be technical because it went back and I went, went back and redid the whole thing. Really, instead of point 0.2 there, I mean, I'd still accept point 0.2, but it's really something else. For the rest of the time, you can work on your paint sheet that you got yesterday as some more practice type of problems.